If, like me, you were just beginning to get your head around the various battles within the old Pro 12 the league within a league as teams competed for Champions Cup qualification and a place in the playoffs then fear not because the new Pro 14 is just as competitive. There will be something to play for in almost every match and the two-conference system will make things even more uncertain as we reach the final stages of the season. Obviously, the biggest change is the introduction of the two South African franchises. Sides that have been cast adrift by Super Rugby have found a new home. So what will they add to the Pro 14? The depth of quality players in South Africa is at an historic low. The very best players that represent the Springboks remain loyal to their home teams held by decent contracts and pride in the jersey. But those fine regional players, ranked just beneath international team, who used to ensure the outstanding standard across the provincial game, have been tempted away to France and England with life-changing amounts of money. Even players in the level below that, who were never in contention to become international players, have grasped opportunities to make a good living in Europe. The Saclets will have it all to do to reproduce their thrilling brand of rugby, says Gwyn. There are 11 South Africans playing at the Welsh regions. These are not marquee players but jobbing players that would have made the rugby back home more competitive and a higher standard. However, I suspect the South African additions to the league will be competitive. They will be far better than the Italian sides and will be particularly difficult opponents when the European sides have international call-ups. The other factor to consider is that this league will be played during the winter in Europe but in the summer months in South Africa. Teams will go from a cold wet January night in Glasgow one weekend to the blazing midsummer heat of South Africa the next. Not only will there be a contrast in conditions but also in style of play. Top of the ground, open and fast rugby in one game to box kicking, scrummaging rugby the next. Home advantage will be crucial and the change in style and mindset will test players and coaches. It promises to be interesting at the very least and I'm sure some fans will even take the opportunity to follow their teams on away trips. I have been to Bloemfontein. It's an interesting place, a bit like Van Wen without the rain. The four Welsh regions will the battle again image a copyright in for Billy Stickland of course. The main motivating factor in adding the South African sides was the additional £500,000 each Pro 12 team will receive. In today's marketplace that would buy you one good international player. Such is the financial might of the French and English game, there will have to be a response by the international community before whole countries are stripped of their talent and the game with as a way to resemble a niche sport played in a few countries, like rugby league. As for the inaugural Guinness PRO 14, the Welsh regions all start the season from different positions. The Dragons are the most interesting region this season. They are now an extension of the WRU and as such will be an example of what could happen to the other regions in the future. The WRU will be keen to show they can run a commercially viable and effective region. Ideally they want to fill their team with Welsh players and offer regular rugby to those talented prospects who are stuck on benches in other regions. They have invested in the pitch and have brought in a new coach, and the S4C cameras are there to see them take on Leinster in the opening match of the season this Saturday. A tricky encounter for sure, but now is the time to play them while some of their stars are absent, still recovering from the Lions tour. Guinness PRO 14 Chief Executive Martin and IE Image and Figri Car Dragons boss Bernard Jackman reveals why he resisted summer spending spree despite financial backing of WRU. It will be a slow process for the Dragons to evolve a side of young Welsh talent. They will be wanting in some areas no doubt, but they need to be measured in three years and judges for the players they develop in that period rather than they do in the next few months. Expectation will be nothing short of stratospheric in the Scarlets region but the high school fast tempo attacking rugby that overwhelmed both Munster and Leinster a few months ago is not the easiest to consistently reproduce. It's not the same as winning through brute force, the subtleties and fine details integral to playing a high-risk strategy requires a high level of team cohesion and achieving that can take time. However, they have proved that on their day they can beat anyone and that should motivate them in working to recapture the magic. The reports coming out of the Blues this summer are cause for concern. A last-minute withdrawal from a WRU takeover was unexpected and then to sell a South African second row before he has even played the game suggests a degree of disharmony or unclear thinking. They have a strong lobby of senior players, they have a chairman that enjoys being hands-on and they have a well-respected coach eager to turn his team into a genuine title contender in his third season in charge. Unity is required because the capital city has been without a decent side for far too long.
Johnny Sexton and his Leinster team are the most popular tips for the championship title. Finally, the Ospreys have been in transition for a while and need to find consistency this season. They have looked to expand their game but have been hampered by injuries, particularly in midfield. It has been a tough move away from the old physical style that made them a force in seasons past and now I see their strengths in their exciting outside backs. The change in their approach should pay off this season providing they have the grunt up front. The first Saturday in September is a special time as the preparations end and the real business begins. A year ago today, who but the most ardent one-eyed West Walian would have predicted the Scarlets would win the league in that fashion I am making no such predictions other than to say that, after an initial bedding down period, I think the rugby will be better, the league will be more competitive and the competition will prosper. Just remember, the majority of the Lions test team came from the Pro 12, so there can be much wrong with the game here. S4C logo Gwyn Jones is a member of S4C's CLWB rugby team for the new look 201,718 Guinness Pro 14 season. S4C's first live match is Dragons v Leinster at Rodney Parade on Saturday 2 September at 3 p.m. Also, on Sunday at 12.50 p.m., catch up with another of Saturday's games with a full match replay of Scarlets against the newcomers, Southern Kings. English commentary is available on the Sunday replay match. Available in HD for Sky and FreeSat viewers.